Let's get started. Hope everyone's doing really well today. I mean, it's a lovely Sunday afternoon. It's a bit of a lockdown here, of course. I hope everyone's doing well. Just a bit of a brief introduction about myself as we get into things. Let me work out this system here. Alrighty. Uh, my name's Alan. I graduated from 2020 from City Warriors High School. Um, in the HSC, I took English Advanced, Maths Extension 2, Chemistry, Physics, and Modern History. And then during, uh, now I'm actually doing a Bachelor's of Science, Doctor of Medicine at the University of Sydney. And I'm currently majoring in Neuroscience and Philosophy. And of course, my credentials educationally, you've already seen in the advertising. So I don't have to, I'm not going to bother <laughs> mentioning that again. Just a brief outline about what's going to happen today. There's my slides. Oh, there we go. We're going to first go through some study tips for formal study sessions, what I tried. Then we're going to have a look at some weekly schedules, then studying in a casual environment. Then a couple of points here about building habits, procrastination, and maximizing your overall well-being. And then finally, we're going to finish off with some exam-specific tips. And then at the end, the Q&A period. So let's, get into, let's actually get into it. All righty. The main takeaways, just to summarize what we're going to be going through for the rest of um, for the rest of this presentation. The first thing is keep trying, right? We don't know everything in the world. Keep pushing, keep trying new things. And ultimately, every small change we make will add up. And just learn from every experience, no matter how positive or how negative, there's always a chance for us to grow and for us to learn more about ourselves and our study tips. So the first thing here, let's have a look at some tips for study sessions. Okay, so there's a photo of myself, of course, taken at the Matrix headquarters. Let's get into it. So the first thing I want to talk about here is the fact that we often hear this idea of the Pomodoro method, and you might have seen it before, where we have this 25 minutes of work followed by five minutes of uh, relaxation time. You see this all the, everywhere around the internet when it comes to productivity, but for me personally, I found that this did not actually work for me. So I instead used a thing called flow states. Flow states arrive when you have an activity that you must complete, which is of relatively high pressure and challenge, but you also perceive your own ability to be quite capable and you're able to have this flow state to do your work. For example, I made this entire presentation in 16 hours, I think actually 20 hours of time across four four hour flow sessions where I was doing it by playing one song on repeat. I've literally listened to this song for like 16 hours of my time and this for like four hours, just on repeat in the flow state. Also a water bottle to stay hydrated when you're studying, right? Always keep a water bottle. And then also only have one task book or device. It's really easy for us to want to multitask, for us to want to do different things, but ultimately just one computer or just one book, just one device to keep us focused in the moment. So some other tips here. Again, don't multitask and also eliminate distractions. So before I made this presentation in the flow state, I eliminated my distractions both externally. So in terms of the phone, I kept it away from myself and notifications off. I had any thoughts, I wrote them down first. I got them out of my brain internally. And also make sure we're not being, we can't enter a good study state. We can't study properly if we're tired or hungry. So let's not, uh, let's remember to, you know, eat well but also to not eat too how much because that can actually end up hurting us. And I found for me personally during the HSC and currently as well, eating heavy carbohydrates like pastas uh, can make you feel really tired. So I instead like to eat, for example, after school before matrix classes, I would use to eat uh, salad rolls from like the, the sushi place. And that, that'd be my afternoon snack before lessons. So that's our main tips for study sessions, but how can we actually implement them into a weekly schedule? How can we actually schedule them into our study sessions? Well, the matter of fact is you don't, or at least for me, I did not have a weekly schedule that I strictly followed, okay? Why is that? Well, here's my weekly schedule, but this schedule I made not to follow it. I actually made this a couple of days ago when I was reflecting back on my experience. And this is my summary of how I spent my time in general. I did not set a strict schedule. I just have now reflected on my time to give you this here. I've got a couple of things. The yellow points here are the flow times. These are the previous uh, so, you know, flow sessions that I had with strict studying, sports in blue, matrix in red. And then all this black time here was time at home, time that I was not being as productive as I could have been. It was time spent watching YouTube, time procrastinating, time doing other things that was not strictly just study. So let's have a look. 
why did I not have a weekly schedule that worked for me? First things first, time is not flexible. Time fluctuates. You might be feeling great one day, you know, bad the next. Our environment, maybe your train's late one day. All these factors will influence how you can follow your schedule. Number two, it's important not to focus on how much time you're spending, but how effective you're using your time, right? Number th uh, three, to implement a schedule, you can't just write one day and think, I'm going to write my times. Okay, at seven, I'm going to do this at eight, at nine. You have to make slow, gradual changes to your schedule, right? Which is why, at least for me, I didn't manage to get to this stage because I, I kept thinking to make a schedule, I had to do it all at once. But we'll have a look in a bit about how we can use habits to implement slow, gradual changes to our schedule. And number four, instead of linking study and events and to-dos to our time-based uh, schedules, we can link them to events. For example, when I enter the train, I'm going to read. Instead of saying at eight o'clock, I'm going to read. I'll mention this in a bit, for the one in the habit section as to why it's so key to have this approach. Okay. So the summary from my little schedule there, I was tired after school. You know, I had school, I had training, I had, you know, matrix as well. All these things adds up. And the thing is, it's impossible to study after that. It, it, it truly is. It's impossible to get into a real state of flow and, and to have serious study sessions. At least it was for me. Most of my flow study was done under pressure. As we remember before, right, we had those ideas of the flow happens when you have a high pressure situation that is also of high perceived effort and high perceived skill. And the other point is the fact that I had lots of transport time on the train, after school. How can we actually use some of the spare time that would otherwise be doing things to make it more effective for us to study, not in strict study sessions, but instead in these more casual settings? Number three, casual learning, right? This is how we do it. And this is actually how most of my independent learning came about. So I, I studied at school, I studied at Matrix, but when it came to my independent self-guided learning, most of it was not done in the flow sessions. Most of it was, was done casually in a fun environment that was easier for me to do so. A couple of tips here about how to implement more casual study and learning habits. First things first, have the perspective. Studying is learning, right? We don't want to memorize content. We want to understand it. That will lead you into a more productive way of approaching the act of learning. Number two, don't read everything. If you can, listen. For example, in modern history, I listened to all of my content. I had three modules worth of content that I completely just spent listening to podcasts and lectures online. You can look at my Matrix article for more tips about the resources I specifically used for that. And also use a whiteboard, right? So use resources like this to teach yourself and to make it more fun. Um, I'll often write stuff on and talk to myself while I'm using the whiteboard resource. Otherwise, we can also use more casual learning in forms of gamified apps and simulations. For example, this over here, the PHET simulation. We can use YouTube videos for science and maths concepts. You can have a look at some of the, the sites that I used on the, my articles again, and also resources like quizzes and, inter, and an interactive digital learning. For example, Learnable, which is this over here, of course, uh, an interesting resource we can use that will help us to explore concepts which are more interactive, more quiz-based learning. It's a lot more useful and actually used Learnable extensively as part of my personal uh, learning. It's not an endorsement. I genuinely did, right? So I genuinely found it really useful, not, you know, being told here by Matrix to say anything. Oops, that's time to move on. Okay. All right. Also, how can we continue to keep it fun? Well, don't read the textbook. In fact, throughout year 12, I did not read my school assigned physics or chem textbooks. I did not. I never touched them apart from when a teacher asked us to. Furthermore, enjoy right English. Oh, actually, wait a second. Furthermore, enjoy English texts, right? So, like, watch Shakespeare, ask a teacher questions, for example, um, uh, you know, ask questions to teachers, enjoy those texts, don't read the textbook. Actually, I'm going to take a step back here because I think I have something beforehand. Whoops. Ah, uh, there we go. Yeah, okay. I missed something. All right, so okay, here, so don't read the textbook. Enjoy your text. For example, Matrix has the interactive watching Shakespeare series. Spend time asking questions and answering them. And let's take a step back to the slide that I actually skipped past before note taking. And I found note taking to be extremely hard. So I actually used the notes that I already had 
from Matrix, from school, the resources online, from Learnable, from YouTube videos. I didn't take my own notes. These are the only notes that I ever wrote formally, right? You always see these beautiful notes on Instagram and whatnot. I tried that, did not work, way too much effort. Don't bother with that. Instead, do things like bookmarking. So here's a set of bookmarks for chemistry that I, I bookmarked. I touch a question and I bookmark them. And then before exam period, I can just go through all my bookmarks to check the sites that I wanted to learn from. And again, use lots of diverse resources to keep it interesting, right? Don't just have one set of notes all in the same font and color, spread out a little bit, have more diversity, have a little bit more uh, spread in what you're using resource wise. Okay, and let's go back to the slide and then also to, whoops, it's lagging for me here already. And now to the final point. So how do we actually implement all of these tactics and tricks? I've told you lots of ways to do study uh, sessions, how to have a weekly schedule, in some ways to not have one, and, and, and also how to implement more casual learning tips. How do we actually put this in our everyday lives? Well, build habits. That's the most important thing, okay? Habits, habits are effortless, right? It means that we can save cognitive resources on things that just are, can happen naturally. We just do things. No decision-making is required. And as a matter of fact, is if something requires effort, it either develops into an effortless habit or it is not sustainable. It's as simple as that, right? So if you want to do things consistently over the long term, you have to make it into a habit, right? And things up to 95% of the things we do every day are habitual. 95%. Most of the things we do, we just do because we do them. That's literally what a habit is in some ways. Okay? So for example, from, a, from year seven as well, like developing these habits, for example, if you go into the bedroom, and that habit you develop is to procrastinate and watch videos, then that habit persists. If you enter the classroom all the way from year seven and onwards, and you listen in class and you make notes, then that habit persists through. Same with online last, well, same with online lessons, right? If you develop the habit of on the very first lesson, the habit is I will listen in class and you persist for just a few days, that continues through. It continues through as a habit to, to, to help you throughout. Same thing with, for example, it's lunchtime, I go to the library to study. That's a habit which you develop over time. Uh, and of course, everyday habits are, for example, whether to concentrate or play games in online class and whether to wear and what to eat. So let's actually explore how habits are developed. And this is actually taken here from James Clear. I've, his book, Atomic Habits, is over here, read it in year 12. It's an excellent resource. Please do read it. This is all from his book. Um, uh, from, from his book here. So let's explore the case of, for example, studying or playing games during online class as, as just a, as a case, which actually I personally faced during lockdown in year 12. Well, the cue. The cue is I am sitting down in front of my computer to begin doing an online class. That's the environment. That's the event. A craving. Well, I crave the fact that I'm not, I'm bored right now. I want stimulation. So I'm bored and I want to increase my level of stimulation. I want to feel less bored or I want to feel less tired, etc. So the response, we can either respond by listening in class and listening to the teacher, or we can respond by playing games and having some fun. And of course, one of these is actually more, uh, more satisfying because one of them is able to more greatly satisfy the reward, which is that we satisfy the craving, we increase our boredom and that builds a habit. So that's the way in which habits develop and, and build on that. So how do we actually build, build these habits? It's a brief rundown. There's, it's a lot more complicated than this. So I do suggest you, if you have the time to read his book, one change at a time, simple as that. Make it focused. Don't try to take on all these different changes at the same time. Just do one small thing at a time. Don't focus on your goals. Focus on the systems around you, right? So focus on building an environment and building habits that allow you to succeed. Everyone has the same goal to achieve whatever it is, a high ATAR, a high result or whatnot. Not everyone has different systems, right? Everyone, there's inevitably going to be people who fail to reach that goal simply because so many people want to reach it. So the difference with making habits is the fact that you don't focus on the goal, you focus on the systems to get you to that goal. To make habits and to build positive habits, make it obvious, make it attractive, make it easy, make it satisfying and flip it around for the opposite to build, sorry, to, to break down bad habits. Okay, so that's habits there. 
And let's address the big thing in the room here, procrastination. I love these drawings on the whiteboard. Appreciate that. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty. So with procrastination, it's just a habit. It's as simple as that. Let's actually have a look at how we can deal with procrastination using the framework of habits. First things first. For example, with procrastination, the cue is that we have the environment, for example, an assignment, and then we want, we feel stressed, we procrastinate to relieve that stress, and that builds the habit, and we continue to put that perpetuation of the habit. Same thing with, for example, watching videos, right? Enter the bedroom, I'm tired or I'm bored, I procrastinate to increase my brain stimulation, and that associates the act of procrastinating with the environment of the bedroom. So that's why we procrastinate when we have an assignment, because we've developed the habit of becoming stressed and our response to stress is not the stress of the assignment. So to actually deal with the assignment, it's to quickly procrastinate because temporarily relieves the stress at the moment. For example, we'll notice the fact that if we say, I will finish the assignment today, oftentimes, at least I found, I became more stressed. And so I actually ended up procrastinating even more, even harder, because that was building up and it was being a, a really major impact in my own life. Okay. So how do we target procrastination? First things first, target the root trigger. What is making you stressed or what is what's actually causing the procrastination act? Is it the fact that you're in the bedroom and you will procrastinate in the bedroom? If so, study outside of the bedroom. If you're tired and that's what's making you procrastinate, well then go and sleep, have some rest. And then whenever we do procrastinate, let's note and interrupt the act of procrastination. So I'll talk about this a little bit just in a moment. And also when it comes to, again, this idea of setting goals to complete acts, set process goals, not outcome goals. So set them in a way that's saying, I will finish 10 or 15 minutes of this assignment today. Instead of saying, I will finish this paragraph because you don't have a strict idea of how much you have to spend there, right? It's very easy. I finish this 15 minutes then I've fulfilled my outcome compared to the stress of saying, I have to do this paragraph and you'd actually know how much effort you have to put in to finish that, that assignment or that part of the paragraph. So now also I suggest you to watch this video here. I have personally watched many videos about procrastinating, often while procrastinating. And I've watched lots of them from all kinds of people. This is one that I've come across. It's the only one that's actually stuck for me. That's actually been meaningful to me. The only way to stop procrastinating by Mel Robbins over here and please do watch it's only three minutes if you're having trouble with procrastination. And let's have a look at the main takeaways that come out of it. Well, first things first, this is some lovely drawings. I like you all in the font as well. Let's first notice and call out the act of procrastination. So if I'm procrastinating by watching video, take a step and say, I am procrastinating. Thank you. By, <laughs> I'm procrastinating by um, but by, by, by putting off my assignment, by watching a video instead, interrupt the habit, count five, four, three, two, one. Five, four, three, two, one. This helps us to take a step back to activate the logical part of our brain, which actually allows us um, to process logically and reasonably and to take control back from the habit. And then just start, do five minutes of work. And as Mel Robbins says in her video, 80% of the people who start something finish it. It's great odds, right? If you start doing something simple as that, you finish it. Because the problem is not the fact that you have trouble finishing work, it's that you have trouble starting it because you keep putting it off with the stress. And once you get into the work, that helps to alleviate your own stress on a more deeper level. So let's actually address this, this point here. Often we'll hear things that people say, how do high achievers beat procrastination? Well, they don't, in the way that, not in the way that we think they do. They build productive habits in response to stress and tiredness. Furthermore, we recognize that relaxation is part of the process of studying and learning. There's no need to be particularly stressed over you know, an assignment. You can just relax and be part of it. And also, furthermore, relax. And it, it's counterintuitive. But in order to do an assignment, you have to stop thinking about it for just a moment, just to stress and to de-stress and relax. And we can do that, for example, by clearing the mind, going out, getting some fresh air, writing down some to-do notes, et cetera. So how are, uh, and the other point here I'll go on when it comes to habits is this comment often, how are high achievers or et cetera, so productive? 
Well, the first thing is if you stress about productivity, that leads to procrastination. This is, this is actually, because everyone collaborate, let's draw the whiteboard and highlight my points, excellent. So if you stress about productivity, you lead at least to procrastination, excellent, thanks Arden. If you have social media, that leads to a culture of maximizing work. Um, and the thing is this culture around us makes it really difficult to break through with this idea that we don't actually have to be procrastination all the time. We have to we'd actually have to be productive all the time. We just have to start and do some work, right? Doing more work does not actually necessarily mean you have better learning or better results. And the thing is, if you have balance when it comes to relaxing, yeah, thanks Austin, if you have time spent relaxing on extracurricular activities, that actually makes studying more effective, not less, um, because it allows, uh, because what it allows us is to have the balance there to perform different activities all at the same time. Right, so balance and time spent relaxing on extracurricular on sports actually makes studying more effective and not less so. All right. Let's see how quickly we can actually change up our drawings to match this new slide. Let's get going, all right? How are they so motivated? Well, emotions, for example, passions, these all change moment by moment, right? So the matter of fact is that uh, like, you don't rely on motivation, right? So high achievers, consistent achievers don't rely on drive. They have habits which they help to, uh, to con continue through. Next slide here, okay. And so, we, we constantly have this idea, we have this culture of grind, right? Discipline, excellent, yes, indeed, discipline. Let's stay motivated, let's stay disciplined with our habits. Culture of grind, social media motivation. We have, we say this all the time, right? This is how you remain motivated to do your work. Well, no, you don't need to be motivated. Just build habits because motivation sparks, but does not sustain action. And the thing is, that motivated people have just built lots of habits that accumulate, and it's just as easy to study on the bus as it is to play a game. Just as easy to do so because you've built habits. You don't rely on motivation, you rely on consistent habits. Thanks, Jessica. Excellent. This is actually quite fun, actually. All right, let's change up the, the drawings for the new slide. Now, the final point here, let's have a look at maximizing well-being. How can we actually study if we haven't focused on the most simple things? So a couple of points here. First things first, simple points, fresh air and sunlight. Get outside, open up the windows, let's get some fresh air and some bright lighting in our lives. Secondly, eat healthy, right? That's right, ticks, I love seeing it. We have to eat healthily, less carbohydrates as my recommendation, but honestly, whatever works, experiment and try around. Stay hydrated, yes, drink water, right? Very important. I will talk about water bottle in a bit. This is a water bottle, it's a Nike Hyperfuel. And in particular, it has a spray tip so I can actually easily drink it while I'm studying without it spilling over and making any mess. Number four, exercise. So make sure we're exercising, whether it's working out or doing some running or cardiovascular training. And then finally, always sleep, right? So making sure we're experimenting to our needs, but having a consistent schedule that allows us to do that. Excellent. All righty. Also, how to maximize our well-being, pursue activities like mindfulness and meditation. I personally use Sam Harris's Waking Up app. It's my recommendation. You can get, you can get a free subscription by, um, by, going, by, by, um, by, by searching it up and actually emailing um, them. Spend time reflecting, pursuing creative activities like drawing or, or writing, and also minimize your exposure to, to triggering material, addicting material, social media, the news, the desire to capture our attention decide to make us emotional and riled up. We can't study for it at that stage. Let's take this time to relieve ourselves of that. I'm seeing some lovely angles here. Alrighty, let's have a look at how we can also maximize our well-being in the environment. Well, first things first, separate rooms, separate corners and spaces. For example, don't study and do everything in your bedroom. If you can, go to the balcony, study out there in the outdoors, relax in a separate area, spread out your spaces to keep it interesting, but also so you can continue to study in a way that's, uh, that, that, that allows you to build those habits in certain environments. Also have bright lighting, have clean flowing air and have green plants throughout, right? I have a plant there, I won't take it out, but have a green plant around to help you to, to stay in that nice frame where you're in a bit of nature, even when you're actually not. And also clean up your room. I am an absolute mess. I, I cleaned up my room uh, this week, actually. I had like a pile of stuff on my table. I just threw most of it out. So throwing out stuff, minimizing distractions to help us to be in a better environment to enable us to have better well-being and also to study at the end. Okay. 
So let's actually, let's finish it off now. Let's talk about some exam tips. We've done everything. We've done our formal study sessions. We've had a look like weekly schedule, had a look at casual learning tips. We looked at building habits, which allow us to you know, continually do these things. We've looked at uh, how to deal with procrastination, motivation, and productivity. Now it's exam time. Let's bring it home. Let's actually kill it. All right, let's go. First point here, in the pre-exam weeks today, my main goal was to consolidate knowledge. So I had different resources, right? I had resources from Matrix, from school, from Learnable, from different videos, from other notes, et cetera. And I'd bring them together and I would spend the time to just write post-it notes in which I would write down all of my knowledge on those post-it notes. Secondly, don't mindlessly do practice questions. The point of practice questions are to number one, enable us to find out where our flaws are, where we're not doing the best that we can, how to answer a question number two. Simple as that. There's no point just doing practice questions all the time, right? So you can minimize the amount by making quality, make them actually productive. Number three, the most important point here, don't sacrifice sleep, extracurriculars and sports. These keep your balance, especially sleep. We have to keep that in mind, especially during these times. And also collaborate with others, but also don't worry about people. If your friend or your, or your, or your colleague or whatever is doing 100 past papers, don't worry about that. Focus on yourself and what you're doing because that's what works for you. People with different people have different tactics and strategies. Don't worry about what other people are doing. On the day of the exam, well, arrive early. That means if you're at home, wake up early. Wake up at least like 30 minutes to an hour before. Even earlier, I used to arrive before my trials on my HSC at this spot here, two hours before. I think I had an exam at 12.30. I arrived at like 10.30. And I'd sat there in the fresh air in nature to just relax there, be in my own time, settle into my own space. That means if you're at home right now, go out for a walk, go out for some exercise before the exam, get the blood flowing, get out of that mind, keep yourself clear. And also it's really tempting for us to, you know, to, to want to keep talking with friends, to want us to, to be like, oh, look, what's the answer? Or like, did, did you have these, uh, what did you study? What did you prepare for? But also have that alone time because during the exam, you're in your own space. You're not around other people, right? You're, you're in your own space, settle in. And I found that, for example, I, I used to buy a little, coffee only, an iced coffee only before I had exams, right? I'd, I'd only buy it before exams. I wouldn't normally drink coffee. I still don't because it gives you a nice boost just before the exam. And that's my suggestion there with coffee and other stimulants. In the exam, so when we get into the exam room, first things first, be confident. So that, that starts with sitting up straight and that includes that being at home. So be confident, Sit up straight, organize your tools, keep your space cluttered, whether it's in the physical hall or at, or at home. Have that, uh, that, even if you don't feel confident, if you feel like you're lacking knowledge, you have to feel confident to have the ability to perform the exam to the maximum. Bring a water bottle again. Like I don't understand why people don't bring water bottles into exams. I know you want to go to toilet and whatnot, but the matter of fact is you've got a two, three hour exam sometimes, you're going to get dehydrated. Keep drinking water. And one thing was if I was, um, if I was having trouble thinking of a question, I would usually kind of just take a moment just to stop, drink a bottle of water, take a swig, and that'd help me to refocus, take my model for a second, and then get back into the work. Furthermore, taking deep breaths. If we're stressed or if we're having trouble before the exam, take a nice deep breath just there to settle into the mood. All righty. Here we go. Simple summary. Enjoy the journey of trying and seeing what works. Just small steps, just consistent progress. It's all that matters. I hope that this webinar has been quite um, insightful. I hope I've given some perspective. You know, like the, the simple truth is like a lot of these steps won't work or at least you just try them and see if they work for you. And so, yeah, uh, that's just what applied for me. In no way uh, will it definitely apply to you. It's just my personal experience. I hope that's been really quite educational here. I've given you a bit of perspective and we'll finish off with a bit of question and answer. Alrighty. So how did you manage modern content with other subjects? Yep, good question actually. Um, I took it accelerated in year 11, but when it came to that content, as I mentioned, I was listening to all my content. I was listening to a civil rights podcast. I was listening to a podcast and, and videos about um, like the power and authority in the modern world. The, the common module. So I was able to listen to the content and not have to read through books. And that helped me to, um, that helped me to uh, I guess spread out the workload a little bit more 
and not have to read so much stuff in addition to my other notes and content. Would you ever wake up early to study? I tried doing that, right? The thing is, I didn't understand that I had to build a habit out of it. So I did try and I would wake up like at six, sometimes even earlier to study when I could. In fact, I made a habit of waking up at six o'clock and having a 45 minutes in the morning just to review notes and watch some videos and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I think it's ultimately just a habit of finding what works for you. Don't compromise on sleep. Just have the balance and study better at night. Then do that better in the morning. Do that. Just try. Um, how do you deal with failure, bad grades, and how would how would you suggest bouncing back, catching up, recovering from loss, and bad mental health? This is a loaded question, actually. Um, I think when it comes to poor mental health, uh, I think this is ultimately. Um, I think focus on just like a meditation on, on noticing what is talk to each other, talk to friends, family, uh, use online resources. Um, there are lots of people who are happy to talk and, and who are happy to interact and, and spend that time, um, um, you know, in spend that time talking and, and interacting and, and helping to, to deal with whatever it is. Ultimately, don't focus on studying. If it's, if you're not in a good mental state, you know, work that through first. Studying comes second. It's not, it's not important deliberately. Dealing with failure or bad grades. I think, again, it's about building habits which make a system so if you if, if you've built the habits and the process if you followed that process and you still got a bad grade and a bad and you failed or whatnot that doesn't really matter because you followed the process so you know that you you, you were succeeding in the way that you followed what you wanted to get right if, if you're going to be uh, if, you're, if we're continuing going to change and and determine our failure and 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 all based on whether we are um getting grades or not that's process that's result oriented thinking results are influenced by lots of factors that we can't control but we can control the habits so if we get a poor grade just say hey look and i did this when i got a mass result back i, was, I wasn't happy with that i said hey look my process is wrong my habits are wrong i've just i haven't failed i've just learned one way which doesn't actually where i can actually improve my my process and try again um uh, do you have any tips on how to deal with being overwhelmed with work or having enough time to ignore and take a break from work? Uh, I think um, that's Natika. I think in general, if you have too much work, as in literally if you're working like 10 hours straight without having too much work, well then reduce the work. I mean, uh, it's, it's a matter of, uh, you know, t telling your teacher or, or telling parents or whatnot, hey, look, I can't do this much work. Let me like, Take a little bit less of the work, uh, discuss, uh, and if, if they if they say no, I would still just say do it yourself. Say I will do half the work. I'll do as much work as I find to be necessary, and then I'll go relax. I'll go do other things that give me that balance in my life. Um, because if, if there is just too much work, like there literally is too much, then don't do too much work. Um, minimize the work, uh, and just choose not to do it. Right? Prioritize what's most important. Learn as much as you need to learn but don't keep repeating it. If you're not gaining anything from it, don't do it. Simple as that. Um, subject choice tips. I don't know. Um, I just whatever you like doing. And, you know, I have my little, my, my stereotype Asian five there, but I, I genuinely enjoyed physics. I genuinely enjoyed chemistry. I genuinely enjoyed one history. Maths was my least favorite subject, but at the end, I, I've come to enjoy it, at least in, in some ways, when it comes to problem solving and whatnot. So um, I think just choose what you like doing. Simple as that. And um, yeah, you can you can consider what your friends are doing and and, and what like uh, what's best scaling and whatnot. But ultimately, all that matters is you you choose what you actually want to do. That's that's as simple as that, and, and you'll be able to um, do that. When did you know what unicorns to do? That's from Turboid. Um, I didn't. In fact, uh, you can read my article from last year, which I wrote during lock. No, it was after lockdown. It was during the like, like mid through eight through last year, and I was saying I have no idea. All right, and the thing the thing is. Um, just don't need to focus on, on uh, like what unicorns, just, just go with the flow, maximize your options. So achieve as high as you can and keep the options open. And uh, really, I think, um, you know, just explore whatever. And I think some, sometimes it's hard to imagine. So maybe look at what each uni course is offering in terms of subjects, what you're actually going to be learning in them. And as I mentioned, I did not know anything about my uni course. I was over the map in year 12. And so really stuff pans out no point in worrying about it just let it go through and just maybe at the end you'll, you'll get somewhere wherever it is that's all that matters no need to really control it um, 
my question is how can we keep interested in boring less uh, okay how can we keep interested in boring lessons yeah that's hard um boring is ultimately a mindset again so maths is boring for me but if you try to like if you take the moment just to engage with the content it often becomes more interesting if you just try to engage with it so part of the problem is the fact that we think oh the lesson's boring so i'm going to stop listening but if you'd actually try to listen just a moment it might actually become somewhat engaged with the content again if the lesson's boring, then uh, try on the content other ways. So if your teacher's a bad teacher or is being really boring, then watch a video on the same concept, right? So 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 learn in different ways and explore different ways of learning. Um, and oftentimes that the content becomes interesting because you're learning something new. If it's repeating content, then just I guess um, find different new things to learn during that same time. What I study at Matrix, did you find that you were learning the content at Matrix and there was then at school is more revision from Paris. Yep. So I studied all of my subjects except for modern history, which is not offered at Matrix. And yeah, definitely, I think that uh, part of tutoring is the fact that it gives you a, a, a double learning. It, it repeats the content, but in some ways it repeats it in a way that's more uh, useful because it allows you to learn it in one style and then supplement it with another style. But so the main benefit of tutoring is, in my opinion, not the fact that you're doing more content ahead of other people. Is the fact that you're doing content that is taught in a slightly different way so you can have different flavors of learning that content from different teachers from different resources and that ultimately helps you to build this web of knowledge that you can actually rely upon and it helps you memorize a lot more alan is group study a group good idea tony i think in general um it depends i think group study is good if you're not really motivated and you need that like any and, and you want that social aspect to it i think in general it's probably if the group gets bigger than like a couple people, it's just too much. When did you personally start implementing these habits in your high school life? Were they from year 12 or did you start later in high school? Yeah, as in, I didn't consciously implement habits. I've only learned this theory about implementing habits now, which is why I think I really hope you've, you've gained some of that theory because throughout high school, I didn't have this understanding of how to build habits. Reflecting back, I can now realize that the fact that I bothered to listen in class the fact that I bothered to do all this from year seven, built the habits that have led up to today. And I'm now able to explain it by looking backwards. Um, yeah, so the habit was very simple. It's just simple as like listening in class and respecting teachers. And I think one point of this is if your habit from year seven has been to play games in class, then that habit's not going to transfer very well to, to high years. You can't just kick up a gear. You have to slowly have that habit persist throughout. And it's much easier uh, to have that. What's something you recommend to do the day before the exam? Past papers are just flashcards revising the content. Yeah, uh, my personal recommendation is the most important thing to do the day before the exam is to sleep, to not have to study too much, right? So day before the exam, get your basics right. Sleep properly, eat properly, hydrate properly, so you're prepared the next day. But I think it depends on what you prefer. I personally would just consolidate my knowledge on those post-it notes again. I just write them down and clear my mind of any thoughts. Have any questions around, I would just check those questions. If I, I check my bookmarks for my past um, for my past websites to see if I had any questions and I'd review those through. I didn't personally do uh, past papers or actually many of them before the exam or, or, or whatnot. Alrighty, so that's that's the last of the questions there. I, I, I know there's not enough time to go through all of them, but, but I do hope that it's been a really quite useful webinar. I hope that I've given you some uh, perspective, some, some ideas. They, will, they may not work for you, but ultimately all that matters is that we try and we continue moving through. All the best, good luck. Good luck building habits, good luck in your future lives, careers, right? This is one moment in our life, we've got far more of it to come and good afternoon. Hope you have a great day, thank you.